Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. We'll scroll on down to the bottom and press School. We've done Lesson 1 on Display Objects, so making objects from classes. We passed in arguments to parameters that way. We talked about variables and some basics of JavaScript, such as syntax and statements and stuff like that. And we've done lesson two on configuration objects and animation. Configuration objects are an object literal that allow us to pass in parameters as properties of an object. So that was for convenience sake, but it did also let us see an object literal. We did animation, which was fun, and now we're on lesson three. So we're going to drop back and do some very raw JavaScript. We're going to show you what functions are. Woohoo! So you could press and go in there, but we're going to just start up some code and start talking about functions. We want to look at functions, a basic function, and scope today. All right, let's do it. So we go back to the main Zim site, press on code, and hit copy to copy our template. Now, if you're just arriving here from, well, from who knows where, and you've never seen these lessons before, you'll want to go in and take a look at the earlier lessons where we talked about getting Atom set up, and uh, we talked about working on the canvas and why we're doing this, and had lots of fun. So go back and check out those earlier lessons, and hey, I'm glad you're here. All right, you'll make it here eventually. <laughs> and if you have been doing all these lessons, that's great. Uh, here's one on functions. Now, we brought in CreateJS, we bring in Zim, we should call this one right here, Lesson03. And if we scroll down, we just bypass a function there, we talked a little bit about that, but now we're going to see what this is from the very beginning. We're going to get rid of where it says put your code here, we're going to get rid of the circle and the dragging, and now we're ready to go to make a function. Are you ready? Hmm. Function, so we use the function keyword. We give it a name with an identifier such as greet, function greet, and then round brackets and squiggly brackets. The round brackets are where we can pass extra information to the function, and then the squiggly brackets is the function body or a block of code. Woohoo, that's the code that the function will do. And that's what's neat about a function, is it can do a bunch of code, and we can do it over and over again. So we can call the function anytime we want, and uh, do it many times, or just once, or, or whatever. And uh, that's kind of cool, because it can be out of order. For instance, we may wait until we click on something, like uh, the person that we're going to greet. And then it will do the function then. Isn't that neat? Uh, or it could do it after a certain time out after a certain amount of time, or just right down here whenever we call it. So let us get prepared for seeing what this function will do. We'll make a label up here. Const label is equal to a new label. And what shall we put in the label? How about waiting for now? Waiting dot dot dot. And we center it on the stage dot center. Okay, so this is a Zim label. And let's see what that looks like. We'll refresh. Oh, and open in browser. Open in browser. Waiting. So there's the Zim label. Uh, by the way, a Zim label, you can't select that it. it's not editable. Uh, it's a picture. The whole canvas is a picture. So in Zim, we also have a thing called a text area where it can have text. It actually overlays an HTML text area, which can be edited. Uh, but remember that on the canvas where we're learning JavaScript, all this is just an image. There's no real uh, editable text, I guess we'll call it. So there's the label waiting, and we want our greet to put something else in it. We want to say label, and we'll use the text property of the label is equal to, that's the assignment operator, and we're going to put the words, hello world, hello work, no. Hello world! There, finally! Hello world! It's a very famous uh, programmer's greeting. Hello world. Nice, huh? So we're going to make the label's text say hello world. Are you ready? Do you want to see it? Here we go! 
Refresh. Oh, we're still waiting. Where? So, any idea why we're waiting? Well, if you recall, we said a function will only run when it's called, and we've not called the function. So, uh, for instance, if we took this out, put it here, just down below the function, it would have said hello world. Shall we see? Hello world. But when the code is in the function, it won't run until it's called. So how do you call it? Greet. We put the name of the function followed by two round brackets. That's it. Cool, huh? Greet. And now let's see. Hello worlds. <laughs> we'll, we'll be friendly to these aliens who might be watching this. Uh, these perhaps could go way out into space one day and perhaps we should be saying hello world. Uh, if we say hello many worlds, we'll see something. Hello many worlds. Refresh. I just want to confirm something. Ah, sure enough. Look, our, our text isn't in the center anymore. And that's just because this is a bit of a, an aside here. We put, we centered the label when it said waiting, but when we added more text to it, it's just going off to the right. We could align the label in the center here with one of its parameters, and then any text that we add to it would be aligned in the center. Or another way would be just say label in here, label.center. This is probably fine for now. If we can spell it, we can do it. Label.center. We also have to watch a little bit about our stage.update. If we're calling greet right here, then it will, uh, it will it, well, here's how the order runs. It will make a label. It ignores this stuff. It remembers that it, it has it, but it ignores it, won't run it yet. Then it runs it, which means these two lines will go. And then comes the stage.update. So we're good. It will update and, and be centered, shall we see? Refresh. There we go. Now it's centered. But if we called this function, say when we click on an avatar, there's an avatar and we want to run the greet then later when we click on the avatar, at that time, the this stage.update is probably long gone and we would want to stage.update right inside the function so that later when we clicked on the avatar, we would see the, the update. Anyway, right now we're okay, so we'll just leave it out. Great. Now, what else can a function do? Because it's kind of like, oh, this is a bit of a boring function. Why didn't we just put hello many worlds right in there to start? <laughs> and that's the case with a function. Often a function becomes much more useful if it doesn't have to do exactly the same thing each time. For instance, a function to calculate the area of a rectangle. We wouldn't want it to always calculate the same <laughs> rectangle, same width the night. And be like, oh, that's a really boring and not very useful function. So what we have to be able to do is pass extra information into the function. And we've already seen this happening. We, we just used it right here. These round brackets are where you can pass extra information. And indeed, this label, which is a class, in JavaScript, I guess, it could be called a function in the background. <laughs> That's a bit advanced, but we're already using these round brackets. That's where we put the extra information. Yay! So here is us collecting the extra information right here. And we say, how about message? So we're going to collect whatever the message is. And we made up this word. This is ours to make up. We could just call it words, whatever words you want to say, or M for message. But we'll use message. And then we won't say hello many worlds. Instead, we will say whatever's in the message. So here's where we collect the extra information, and that is called a parameter. So we've just made a parameter. Parameter collects arguments. And the arguments get passed in here. So we could say um, Yo, there we go. <laughs> All right, so we've just passed in the string yo, and it gets collected inside of message. So message is now, it holds the word yo, very much like a variable does. So variables and parameters are quite close. 
a variable we would declare a parameter it just it works for us it, it just we don't have to say uh, var or let or const in there we just it, it it's worked out for us and the scope of this this message right here well before we talk about scope let's just see it work shall we and we'll talk about scope in just a sec all right so we refresh here and now it says yo yo has been passed into here collected and used inside the function i i like to think of this as a portal we pass this into the portal and it lands in here in message and then inside here we get to use it message is not available outside this function only inside this function has access to message for instance if we zog here message it will tell us we refresh it gives us an error f12 reference error so f12 to see our console message is not defined it doesn't know what message is but if i pick this up and put it inside here can you guess what's going to happen we refresh here yo it tells us yo in the console at line 50. line 50 says yo the message is yo so inside the function we have access to the parameter message outside the function we don't and that is governed by scope the scope of the message how how broad is the scope well it's only as broad as inside this function okay and that's called scope message is scoped to the function so not out of no, outside of the function. And any variables as well that are made inside the function can only be used inside the function. Do you want to see that while we're talking about it? Maybe we have var x is equal to 10. Not that I don't know what x has to do with the greeting, but whatever. Maybe say it 10 times. Uh, inside, we could zog what x is. <laughs> Helps me put that on the same line. Zog x. And how about outside? We will zog x. And let's see what we get. Can we refresh here? Uh, well, it tells us x is not defined, so it doesn't even know how to zog x on the outside. And if we comment that out and refresh here, there's 10. So the same deal, x is only available inside. Uh, by the way, if we had an x on the outside, var x is equal to 20. On the outside, what do you think this would do? Hmm. Well, this x is now overwritten the outside x. Uh, well, let's comment that out for now. Now what, what, it, what, what it would do. When we zog x, it will be this x right here. But if we vard x inside of here, then this will be the inside x. Shall we try? Oh, I'm sorry, this is like a tongue twister almost, isn't it? Inside, outside, oh, blah, 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 blah. And I don't know, it's just going to hang there. Did I lose the internet or something? <laughs> Seems to be having a problem. Zog x bar x. Let's try that again. Refresh. It's not even... There we go. I don't know what happened. 20 and 20. So this is saying 20. So what this means is a variable that is declared outside a function is available inside of here. It's only a variable that is declared inside a function that is not available outside the function. So think about it. It's kind of like privacy. If you declare something inside a function, only inside of there can see it. But if there's more functions inside of that, those can all see it too. But outside of a function, you can't see a variable that's been declared inside the function. I'll leave it at that. A scope is something that can fool you, can trick you a little bit. It does become important as you're coding. However, when you're first learning JavaScript, it's a little bit confusing 
and you don't really, really need it right away. All right, so <laughs> I'd rather talk more about functions. Shall we do that? I'm going to just comment out all of this scope stuff here. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Remember our comments. I can select it, by the way. You can select, go control slash, and multiple select comments if you want. So we've got our message. We're centering it. We're zogging it. Great. Let's try running the function twice. Great. And then we say, uh, yo, there, or hey, you. Nice greetings. <laughs> I'm in the hood. Yo, hey, you. <laughs> so uh, there's the second one. What do you think will happen? Well, I can describe it. It's going to call the function and pass in yo. Yo gets collected here. Yo gets put in the text. Yo gets logged to the console. When we call hey you, hey you will get put in the text. That means it will overwrite yo, which was there. So we should see hey you in the text. But then we're going to zog hey you. So we'll see both a zog for yo and a zog for hey you, but the label will only show hey you. Make sense? We refresh hey you, yo, and hey you. Okay, so we can certainly run the function more than once, as many times as we want. Now here's something a little bit unusual. I'm going to comment out this one, and we come up here, and let's try running the function. What was it called? Greet, round brackets. Wow? Question mark? <laughs> let's see what happens when we run the function here. Are you ready? We save that. We refresh. Wow? What? What? So this is a little special. It, it From a, the first look, it doesn't seem to make sense. How could we call the function before we say what the function is? Well, the reason for that is this thing called hoisting. Hoisting. And here's another thing that you don't have to worry so much about. It's just something fun in JavaScript that's helpful at times. It means that uh, JavaScript will read through the code, and if it finds a declaration of a function or a variable, it will lift that declaration up to the top of the scope, which means the top of the function it's in. So it's just like we defined function here at the very beginning, or we defined the greet there at the very beginning. Therefore, by the time it gets to here, it does know what's in greet. So it does that, it sort of reads it over, grabs all the declarations, puts them at the top, and then it goes line by line by line. When it gets to here, it knows what greet is. So don't worry so much about that. Let's comment that out. Uh, it's another thing like scope that's a bit unusual. It's helpful at times, and so be it. Um, perhaps just to be complete about scope, I forgot to tell you one thing. If we use if we say x equals 10 here like that, I'll bring that back. We just commented out all these things and we declared it there as far as 20. If we do not put a var in front of it there, we just have x equals 10. Then what it does is it says, did I declare a variable called x inside of here? And if you didn't, then it looks outside to find if there's a variable x declared there, and there is. So therefore, it will use it. In other words, x is going to be 10. It's, it's no longer going to be 20. And even here, it won't be 20 either. Well, did we call the function yet? No, we didn't. OK, so here we've zogged it, and we haven't even called the function at all. There, call the function. So we declare it as 20. The next line, sure enough, it's going to zog 20. Then we're calling greet yo, and it will zog 10. If we zogged it again after we called the function, it will be now 10. OK, does that make sense? I think hopefully that's pretty obvious, but I forgot to mention it. Some people think if you don't put the var in front of there that it's a global variable. But no, it's not, because there's already a variable x here, so that means it will put it in it. If we didn't declare an x here, then indeed it is a global variable. Um, so we did not declare x with a var, 
and we just say x equals 10, that works in JavaScript. It looks outside of this function and it looks for a variable called x. Oh, there isn't one. So then there's no x in this function, so it looks outside of this function right here. This is also a function. We're going to see more about that in the next video. And it can't find it. And then it looks outside of any other functions, and I guess there's none left. So that makes it what's called a global variable. A global variable is not necessarily the best thing to do, because other libraries might be working here on the same page as yours. And if everybody just let our variables go global, then they would all get mixed up. <laughs> so we generally do not want to do that. Um, there's one more thing. It's about ES6. So the new JavaScript, we have a thing called let. So we could use vars, but we could also use let. Let is scoped to the scope of this as well. And that's fine. So anywhere I was using vars, actually, maybe should have been using lets. Let's 20, all of that stuff would... Oh, wait a minute. Can we let something twice? Let's just check. We refresh here. Yep, looks like we can let twice as long as we're in different scopes. I think if you let twice in the same scope, you run into a problem. Let x is equal to 20, like that. I think that lets you do that. <laughs> No, let doesn't let. It says, no, 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 we've already let it in that same scope. Var, you could do that with var. It, it didn't care. Anyway, you don't want to do that. Uh, let is scoped just the same way that we were talking about before, except there's a slight difference. And we have we seen conditionals yet. We have not seen conditionals. We've not seen for loops. That's why I didn't really bring it up right now. Until we see these things called conditionals and for loops, they also have squiggly brackets. Let the scope of let is different than var in that case. So why don't we forget about that? Let's forget about that for now. Let's get rid of these x's and stuff again and get on with the functions because there was one or two more things that we need to see about functions. Speaking of one or two, how about this? What if we wanted to pass two parameters? How would we do that? So here's the greet with one parameter or one argument being passed in. What if we wanted to say, who, who are we giving this greet to? Hey, Fred, yo. Okay, so now we're passing in Fred and yo. Well, up here, we would just collect two of them. Name or person, person, comma, or our name would have been fine. Person, message. We're collecting both those things. And now what we can do is something like we don't say, hey, Fred here, plus message. Oh, by the way, the plus means concatenation. So plus is concatenation, or in other words, joining. Plus will join two strings together. But we don't say, hey, Fred, because then our function, every time we run our function, it would be talking to Fred. Well, what if we talk to Joyce? Hey, Joyce. You know, now we say, hey, Fred, but we're trying to talk to Joyce here. So instead of, hey, Fred, do you know what we would put here? That's right, person. So we would put person, and then it would say person, comma, message. <laughs> Yo. Maybe we want something like plus uh, a space. Or is it a comma? I think a comma goes there, doesn't it? Yeah. So now we're concatenating again. It's going to be Joyce, comma, space, and then the message. Shall we see it? We refresh here. X is not defined anymore. <laughs> Where do we have one of those X's? There is a final zogging of X. <laughs> or a console.log of X. There we go. Choice, comma, yo. Do we have quotes around that usually? May as well show you that while we're here. Some JavaScript basics. We can put single quotes around yo like that. Single quotes. Oh, uh, wait a minute, where are we? Uh, well, actually, we could have done that, but we want them here around the message. So to put a single around, a quote around the message is a little bit more difficult. We'll put a single quote in there, and then we'll concatenate on to the end another single quote. Um, by the way, there is, in the new ES6, there's an easier way 
to join strings together. It's called templating, but we'll leave that for another day because we're really looking at functions right now. Anyway, these are this is concatenation, and we're putting single quotes now inside of there. You see how that works? And we refresh here. Single quotes. Well, what if we wanted to put double quotes? We could just reverse it. We could make that a single quote, this a single quote, this a double quote, this a single quote, etc. But another way to do it is put a, uh, a double quote there, like that, and do what's called escaping the double quote. And here as well, put a double quote there. Oh my goodness, how many quotes do I have in here? <laughs> I want <laughs> Adam! Uh, no, wrong way. Uh, still wrong way. There we go. So that's a backslash. So backslash quote means even though I'm inside of quotes, what I really mean is the string of quote. I don't, I don't want to end the quote. I don't want to end the quote. I really mean I want to put a quote. So that's called a backs, um, a escape the quotes like that. And it's just a way that allows us to put quotes within quotes, obviously. And there we have uh, the double quotes. Great. All right. Don't worry if you didn't get that. Uh, you might have wanted to know that. Another thing that the backslash can do, just the last thing here before we go on with our function, backslash n. I want to return to our function. And that's a reminder that I want to actually look at returns when we return to functions. Anyway, this is another type of return in a sense. That means a new line backslash n. So it's not really an n, it's been escaped and it's a backslash n, <laughs> which we put in the wrong place. We put that before the comma, probably we will want that to go after the comma, like that, and refresh here. And then you've got Joyce, comma, yo, on a new line. All right, so just some, some things, some extra details. Uh, with strings and stuff that you may run into. Uh, programmers have, they're very logical people. They want to make sure that we can do anything we want. How would we do this stuff if they didn't make a system and this is the system? So I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not really happy about that. I don't say, oh, isn't that amazing? I'm, I suppose I'm satisfied that they did it. <laughs> it's not my favorite aspect of coding. And it may not be yours either. It's like, so I don't want to learn all this stuff. But if you want to make it work properly, sometimes you have to learn these little small things about code. OK, it's not the end of the world, huh? Let's uh, we'll make our way on through. There's one more small thing, although it can be very handy. It's called a return. So a function where we're here, can return a value. And we go down to the bottom of the function, usually at the bottom, and we return um, some value. If we return 7, great, the function returns 7. If we return high, it returns high. Uh, true, it returns true, etc. Now we'll tell you what that means in just a sec. Uh, but first, why don't we return the message and then we'll concatenate on is accomplished, like that. So this is the value right here that the function is going to return. Now, imagine that we were, say, calculating an area. We mentioned that before. We're calculating an area of a rectangle when we pass in a width and a height. And we want that to return an answer so that we can use the answer. Otherwise, we maybe can't return, we can't use the answer. So a return is a way to do that. I would say, you know, like maybe one out of 10 functions will return a value. It's whenever you need it to happen. So as you're learning code, you don't need to worry so much about that. But later on, you're certainly gonna wanna know that a function returns a value. So how do we collect that value? Well, we collect it right here, uh, let, answer, for instance, equal the results of the function. So what happens is whenever a function returns something, the return value gets put like right there, right where the function was called. So in a sense, it replaces it. So if this string is being put right here, we're going to assign that string to the answer. And now we can zog what that answer is if we can spell answer, and so were. 
All right. So this should say, um, let's see, we're talking to Joyce. We've just put the message. The message was yo. It should be yo is accomplished. And that will be in the answer on line 63. You want to see? Okay. Oh, sigh. How is this for you? You're going to have to watch this again? All of this information, huh? We refresh here. Joyce, yo, look. Yo is accomplished on line 63. Yo has been accomplished. We've managed to say something and we returned. It's almost like a confirmation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're returning. We, we, we did this. We did this for you. Now, like I said, you don't you certainly don't have to collect that, but it, at times it's handy to know that you can return an answer and then collect that answer. All right. Well, as mentioned, I think we've gone through a fair bit today. Just in summary, it looks like a mess. It's all over the place, isn't it? It's probably all this stuff. Anyway, a function. We declare or make or call a function there. And we collect parameters. So these are the parameters. We make up those names. And it's a way that we can use extra information inside of here. We pass in the parameters here. It's kind of like hands. Aren't these like hands? It's sort of like, hey, greet. And here, here's what we want to say and to whom. And we, it's like hands that are giving. These hands right here are giving these values. And then here, we have the hands that are receiving the values. And they say, oh, thank you very much for those, that extra information. I could use that. And indeed, we do use it in the function. Now, remember things like the label we could put that we're waiting. You can also specify, I think the next thing is, uh, it might be the size. And the next thing is the font, Verdana. And the next thing is the color, uh, which it might be blue. So these are all arguments that we're passing in so that the label is a stronger function. The label can do more things. It makes a label, but it would be a boring label if it was always the same. So here we are passing in arguments to that to tell it to do more things. All right, we don't want to do any of that. Nice, huh? That is a general function. We saw a little bit about scope as well. We saw something about hoisting. We saw return values. In the next video here at Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding, we'll see some different types of functions. And until then, we've got a different dancing video. <laughs>there <laughs> we go. I just realized that I kind of was, uh, was I shouting? I was a bit exuberant through all that. <laughs> so be it. So I'm so sorry if I weren't relaxed and slow enough. Should I have been a bit more calm and said, hey, parameters, man. Uh, maybe in the next one, I'll calm down. But it's exciting, this coding, isn't it? So we'll see you next time. Uh, come on into zimjs.com slash slack and uh, join us talking about Zim, and uh, it'd be great to have you there. Certainly beginners are welcome, and even, even professionals are certainly welcome there too. Seems like we've got a lot of professionals, but I'd love some more people beginning, that's for sure. Ciao.